Welcome to Flip It Furniture. My name is Amy. At the end of last winter, me and my husband Joe picked up this massive dresser that someone was selling for only $40. She told me she had already scuff sanded it extremely well and it was ready for paint. So I thought this would be a great piece to do a quick flip on with my new paint sprayer. Little did I know, there's a lot more to paint spraying than I had thought. At this point, I watched about 20 videos and I thought, well, it can't be that hard. I'll just do all the things that everybody does. I carefully covered my drawers and then I put them back inside of the dresser so that I could spray everything all at once. Then I mixed up my watered down chuck mineral paint in white and I started to put my paint sprayer together. Now notice this, it's actually backwards. That little tube that sucks up the paint if it's on backwards, then when you tilt the sprayer, nothing's gonna come out. And notice how windy it is. You can hear how windy it is. You can see how windy it is outside. That is just a giant mistake. If it's too windy, don't spray. Also, if it's too cold, which it was, my paint won't dry. So when I'm waiting an hour or two in between coats, the first coat isn't even drying. At this point, I'm wondering is this how it's supposed to come out? Hardly anything is coming out. Well, on a paint sprayer, there is a little dial on the side of it with a plus and a minus. If you rotate it towards the plus, then more comes out. If you rotate it towards the minus sign, less comes out. That's one of the trickiest part parts for me is to figure out where that dial needs to be for what type of paint I'm using. So this was chalk mineral paint that I had watered down. And honestly, I didn't like the consistency of the chalk mineral paint, and I didn't like how fast it dried. I was showing you the tip right there because you can see that some of it is dried on there. So it had a really hard time coming out of the paint sprayer. And all I really needed to do was take a rag and wipe that tip, and it would have came out a lot smoother. So here I'm putting a second coat on because I figured this is what it should look like after one coat. But that's just not the truth. It's so cold out, this isn't even dry, and I'm putting a second coat on. So what I'm actually doing is causing drips. This process started to be a nightmare around this point right here. <laughs> Another huge thing that I didn't do, and I'm not even sure why I didn't do it. I think I was just so excited to use the paint sprayer. I didn't prime my piece. I took the word of a complete stranger. She said she scuff sanded it. I kind of looked at it and thought, yeah, well, she did. It doesn't matter what somebody says. You know, you're going to put all this time into it. You should really make sure that it's scuff sanded. And the only reason I would scuff sand it is because it has a, um, it has a really smooth finish over it. So my paint isn't going to adhere properly. If I had scuff sanded it, it would have roughed it up, took some of that shine off, and then it would have been fine. Another option would have been for me to use a primer. And no doubt, I always use a primer most of the time. I don't know why I didn't here. It was a huge, huge, huge mistake, especially when I'm painting something white. So here I am continuing the piece, not letting it dry enough in between the coats and whether that is just way too cold for it to dry at all. So I've got about two and a half coats of paint on here and I wait about four hours and then I come back with a sanding pad because the texture on this piece is just, it's really orange peely and it's so dry and matte because it's the chalk mineral paint. I'm just, it, this piece is so big at this point, I'm completely frustrated and I'm ready to give up, honestly, because I don't know how this is gonna work out. So I scuff sand it and I'm still not happy with the texture. So for some reason, my brain says, well, put on another coat, maybe that'll help. Ugh, it was just, I'm so wrong. It was just so wrong. And the paint is not even coming out of the sprayer because it keeps drying at the tip. And all I needed to do here was grab a rag and get it off. But I didn't 
because I didn't know. So after all that work, this is the texture I'm left with and I'm just not happy with it at all. And there's tons of drips on the piece, tons of them. And that's because it wasn't drying in between coats. I had my dial. I, it was just everything was wrong. Everything I did was wrong. So what did I do? I put it in the garage for months and I didn't even look at it. As the months went on, I thought about the piece and I thought one day when I feel really good, when the weather's warm and my spirits are high, I'll tackle it. So that day was this week. And the first thing I did was take out my mouse sander so that I could sand the entire piece down. I can get rid of all those drips. Anywhere where there was a drip or a chip because the paint didn't want to adhere properly, I got rid of it. I took my heat gun and my putty knife and I just scraped the chalk mineral paint off of it. While I was doing that, I, I scraped some of the finish off of it. My main goal was to make sure that everything was really smooth. I didn't want any bumps or lumps. I really wanted to get a smooth finish. And I practiced pretty much all summer with the paint sprayer on other pieces. So at this point, I felt pretty confident. For the drawers, all I did was sand it smooth. The drawers weren't as bad as the entire piece was. So I'm using my Bondo and I mix it up just to fill in the hardware holes. I decided I was ordering some hardware holes that were a little bit smaller. And when that dried, I just sanded it nice and smooth. I've been painting furniture for a really long time now and I flipped hundreds of pieces and I still make mistakes. One of the biggest mistakes I made was not sanding that completely flush. I left some of the Bondo on there and I didn't realize it until after everything was said and done. So mistakes happen. It's just what you do afterwards and not all pieces I'm going to fix. I sometimes I think that for my mental health, I have to just move on. And that's what happened with this piece. So I rolled on two coats of Zinzer's bin and I was hoping that it would help with adhesion. Now I want to share with you a few of the things that I did learn over the spring and the summer practicing with my paint sprayer. I'm using Mint by Michelle's Chalk Mineral Paint and it's in the color time and space. Instead of using the sprayer to spray the front, I'm just going to paint it on with a brush really quick. I do two coats onto the front. That way I don't have to bother with all the plastic and covering everything. That takes so much time. It's so much quicker for me to just paint on the front. So the tip that I really like to use is the blue tip for the paint sprayer. And that's when I'm using mineral paint, not chalk mineral paint, not latex, not clay based. I'm just going to use mineral paint from here on out whenever I'm spraying. And notice the direction of my suction tube. I finally have it right. And when you want it to, to face the way that it's spraying because you're going to tilt it and it will come out so nicely. Now this is that little dial that I was talking about and you can go up and down. I found that if you start from negative, which is zero, and go up about 12, it's anywhere between 10 and 12 notches, that's sort of perfect for me. It doesn't come out really fast. And I always start at the back of my piece just so that I can get a really good feel for how fast I should be going with my piece, how much is coming out, and then I'll feel confident moving on to the sides and the front or the top and the drawer fronts. The mineral paint goes on so nice and so smooth. It self levels. I don't even have to um, sand in between coats. I have before with a really high grit, but most of the time it's just not necessary. I'm going to seal this piece with Dixie Bell's clear coat in satin. And I love the sprayer for clear coats. That is by far the easiest. Thing to do for me and it looks so professional and I've said that before but it's my way to go for the clear coat. I learned so many lessons working on this piece and unfortunately I'm not going to make my money back on it. I put way too much time and effort into it. 
But in all fairness, I learn from my mistakes. So making those mistakes is crucial sometimes. And here is the icing on the cake. I never had to bondo the holes in the drawers because the hardware that I ended up going with fit just perfectly. So I had to re-drill the holes. And here it is, all finished. It's unfortunate that it didn't go as planned and I won't be able to sell it for as much as I would like. But the truth is, I learned a ton of lessons. And I hope you did too. I hope that you can learn from my mistakes because that makes it all worth it. And I will see you next time.